Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Dart tutorial video. Today we're going to be looking at client-side development with the Dart programming language. Dart being a fairly robust general programming language has some fairly nice client-side frameworks built into it. Being a language made by Google, of course it has its own version of Angular, which is currently called Dart Angular version 5. It also has some bindings for React, the most popular version of which is called Overreact, and there are many other client-side frameworks that we can take a look at in the future. For this tutorial video, however, we're just going to make a fairly vanilla Dart to-do list example, which doesn't use any of these client-side frameworks. So first I want to make a new directory called to-do example, then I want to go inside of that directory, and I'm going to use stagehand to actually scaffold out the beginnings of our application. And the template that I want to use with stagehand for this project is the web simple template. If any of you guys did forget, you can install stagehand simply by calling pub global activate stagehand. You can also update it just simply by rerunning this command. And this works for any of the add-on pub executables. Once you've finished running the stagehand command, you'll have all these files which have been generated. There'll also be a line at the bottom which tells you to run pub get, but don't run it yet because we want to edit the pub spec YAML first. So just because I want to use Dart 2, I just want to come in here where it says dev.55 and change it to 60 and then save it. And this will then get the latest dependencies for this SDK. If your IDE or your text editor doesn't automatically get the packages, go ahead into your console now after you've saved the pubspec YAML and run pubget to get your dependencies. Notice that we have this web directory and inside of the web directory, we have an index.html, we have a favicon, we have a main.dart file, and we have a styles.css file. This web folder is the folder where you would put all of your client-side Dart code inside of your application. So even if you had a bin and a lib folder in this application, the compiler would know that anything inside of the web directory is meant to be client-side code. We can take a look at the HTML document. You can see here it's got the same title as our project. And we also have this script tag, which is the most important part of this. And the script tag here is pointing towards a file called main.dart.javascript. And this will be the file that gets built from our Dart file. So Dart gets transpiled into JavaScript using a compiler called the Dart2JS compiler. And before Dart2, you would have to actually specify that you wanted to use it inside of your pubspec YAML, but now you don't actually have to do that anymore. You'll also notice that inside of the body, all we have is this div with an ID of output, and this is essentially the entry point for the generated application that we created here. If we look inside of our main.dart file, you can see that we're using this query selector function to grab that div, and then we're putting text inside of it using this text property. And the text is just saying your Dart app is running. For our to-do application, I'm just going to change the HTML slightly. So instead of the div ID output, we're gonna create a label, which just says, what do you want to do? And then we're gonna have an input, and this will have an ID of to-do, and it will have a placeholder that just says enter a to-do. Then below this input, we'll have a button, which will have an ID of clear, which says clear all to-dos. And this will be a button that we can click, which will clear our to-do list. And then after this, we'll have our actual to-do list, which will just be a div with an ID of to-do dash list. Now these IDs are important because we're going to have to grab these nodes with our query selector. And we'll talk about that when we get into the Dart code. I'm also going to add some styling to our styles.css. I'm not really going to go over what I did here, but you can add whatever styling you want for your application inside of this file. Here's what our index.html currently looks like. You can see there's a little bit of styling involved here, stuff to make the input box look a little better, make the button look a little better, and make it a little bigger. All right, so now let's actually start to write the code for this application. 
As with any program, I like to write the model first. So we want to model the to-dos that we're going to create. And our to-do will just be a class to-do. And it will have an ID and a text string. The ID will start at zero and it will increment as we create to-dos. And then the string itself, the text string, will be final because each to-do will be immutable. So we won't be able to edit a to-do. You'll just be able to create one or delete it or delete all of them. So inside of the constructor, we just say this.text because we want to pass the text into the constructor. And then in the body of the constructor, we just increment the ID. So the first to-do we make will have an ID of one. The second to-do we make will have an ID of two. And it will keep going like that. Now up at the top of our application, let's make some global variables for the items that we want to bind to our HTML document. So we have our input box, which we're going to call the to-do input. We're going to have the UI list, which is the actual to-do list. And we also have our button, which is our button clear. And each of these has their respective types. So the input box is an input element. The div item is a div element and the button item is a button element. We also want to create a list of to-dos which will start out empty and this will sort of act as an in-memory database which will allow us to store our to-dos. As mentioned before, we can use this query selector function to gain access to the HTML nodes. We're grabbing the to-do ID node, which is our input box, and putting it into this variable. Then we're grabbing our to-do list and putting it into this variable. And then we're finally grabbing our clear button and putting it into this variable. So just note that all of these types and these functions are actually coming from this Dart HTML library. You'll notice that many of the functions are very similar to what you would find in JavaScript or jQuery, and that is by design. So now that we have access to these various different HTML elements, we want to be able to listen on their properties. And Dart treats these properties as streams. So for the input box, we have an onChange property, which looks at the change events that get passed through the input box. And we can use this to find out whether or not the user has inputted a to-do or not. And if they have inputted one, we can call a function called add to do, which will allow us to then add a to do to our list and then display it visually. For our button, we have an on click stream, which again we can listen to. And this will then call a remove all to do's function, which will then clear out all of the to do's in our list and of course visually as well. So now let's just create these functions. So I'm going to create the add to do function. This takes in an event. And then we have this remove all to do's function, which takes in a mouse event. For the first part of add to do, we want to take the value inside of the input box when this add to do is called and create a new to do item out of it and then push that to do item into our to do list. So here we create the new to do by putting the text inside of the input box and then we can push it into the list using the add method. After we've done that, we want to call another function called update to do's, which will update the visual part of our application. And then we want to take our input box and change the value inside of it into an empty string so that the user can type in the next to do. Before we create this update to do's function though, let's finish filling out the remove all to do's function. So again, as I mentioned before, this takes in a mouse event. And what we'll do is we'll take our UI list, which if you remember is bound to that div that we created. And we want to take all of its children, which is represented by a bunch of DOM nodes in sort of a tree shape. And we want to just delete all of them. So we call this clear method on it. And it will then delete anything that's inside of that div. We also want to clear our in-memory database. So we call our to-do list. And then we call the method clear on that list and it will wipe out any data that was saved in that list. All right, so now let's work on the update to do's function. So the first call in this function is going to take our div and just completely clear any of the children inside of it. This way, every single time a user adds a new to do, it rebuilds the entire list from scratch. 
Now the reason we do this is so that we can avoid duplicates. So if somebody puts in a to-do and then somebody puts in another to-do, then it might double some of those to-dos by accident. But if we clear the list every single time a new to-do gets put in and then rebuild it with the new list, then we can avoid having those duplicates. Now we can iterate through each of the items inside of our to-do list and create the actual visual elements for each of these to-dos. So we can use the for each method to do this. We put in a callback function which takes in each of the to-dos and then it does something to each of those to-dos. For all of our to-dos, we're going to create a new div, a new button, and a new span. The div will just be the container that contains the span and the button. The button will be the button which allows us to remove an individual to-do from the list. And then the span will contain the text of the to-do itself. Now notice for div and for span, we're actually using the constructor for the element object. And then we're specifying that we want a div or a span by using a named constructor. Whereas for the button element, we're just creating a button element object. Now the reason we do this is because the div and the span share a lot of similar properties. All right, so now let's set up our button. So we wanna set up the button so that it has like a big X on it. So we set up the text for the button. Then we want to give our button an ID. Now this is important so that we can actually identify the button that we're clicking. So we say button remove.id equals the to do ID dot to string. So each of the buttons will have the same ID as the to do that they correspond with. Then like our clear button, we also want to listen for any on click events to allow us to then remove the to do. And we'll do this with a function which we'll call remove to do, which we'll create in a moment. Now we want to set up this span. So we just say span.text equals to do.text. And this just takes the to do.text and pushes it into the span's text property. And then finally, we can add all of these elements to the outer div which we had created. So the UI list div is the outer parent and we're just adding the remove button to the div that we created up here and then the span to the div that we created up here and then we're adding that div to our UI list. And this happens for each of the to do's that we have inside of our internal list. All right, so now let's create the remove to do function. So again, like the remove all to do's function, it takes in a mouse event. First, we're going to call event dot stop propagation. This stops the mouse event from causing any other things to trigger. So if for instance, our div had some kind of on click event that we were listening to, it would stop it from proliferating through the button into the div. It's fairly common to find this function inside of JavaScript and jQuery, and it's used quite a lot for this type of functionality. Now we want to gain access to the outer div, which is connected to our to-do, as well as the button that we just pushed. So we can do this through the event variable that's being passed into here. So the mouse event knows the current target, and we can cast that current target as an element, and then we can get the parent of that element, which is our div, or we can just get the element, which is our button. With the button, we can get the ID, which is attached to it, which if you remember is just the ID of the to-do. And then just for safety, we're gonna split it and any potential dashes, because this could potentially happen. And we're just gonna grab the first item of this ID. And then we're going to parse the string as an integer so that we can convert it back into an integer and then compare it with the ID that's connected to the to-do. So now with our key, we can call to-do list dot remove where, and if the to-do ID equals the key that we pulled out of here, then that to-do will be removed from our internal database. So this is the functionality that allows us to remove a single to-do from our list. Now there is one more thing that we need to do because this will not actually do anything visually for our application. 
just by removing the item from the list, it will not update in the DOM until we actually add a new to do. So instead, we'll just call div.remove after we remove it from our list. This way, it will just remove the div from the DOM node. That way, it will just update visually. All right, so that's it for our application. So now let's run this application. In Dart 1, you used to just be able to run a command called pub serve, which would serve all of the files and then build them if you change them. However, with Dart 2, rather than using pub serve, you now use a external command called web dev. And you can install this command just like how you can install stagehand. So you just say pub global activate web dev. Once you have web dev installed, you can actually build the project by running web dev build. You can see here inside of our application that we now have this build folder, and this is where our built files now exist, mainly our main.dart.javascript file, which is generated from our Dart file. And you can see it's quite complicated because it has a lot of features from the Dart core library that we're using in this JavaScript library. Now, you would run this command if you just wanted to push your application out into production or maybe onto a server. If you're just writing the file and maybe just fooling around with it, then you can just run web dev serve and this will automatically serve it for you and rebuild it if you've actually made any changes to the dark file. So you can see here it says setting up file watchers. So it puts watchers on the Dart files, and then it serves everything out on localhost 8080 by default. And here's our application. So inside of our text box, I can now type in a to-do. So say get milk, and then when I hit enter, it should add it to the list. And you can see here it has a button, and it has the text, which is in a span. And I can add more if I want, and I can just keep adding as many to-dos as I want. Now we also have our button, so if I just want to delete the first to-do, I just click the X here, and this will delete get milk. We can also take a look at the structure of the HTML inside of our application. So here inside of our inspector, you can see that we have this big div, which has all of our items inside of it. And each item has its own div and then inside of the div each one has a button which has the ID of the actual to do and then it has a spam with the text inside of it and also of course if we just want to clear all of the items inside of our list we just click clear all to do's and this will then clear all of the to do's from the list as you can see. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.